Infernal Shrines, map number one in the second semi-final. Washed up 2.0 against Hold My Beer. And this is another best of three series in the Heroes Hype Premier Series. And as I said, we're in the semifinals, and we have this particular lineup for Washed Up. It's not really the same lineup that they are playing with in Division S, but it's a lineup that they usually use for the Heroes Hype Tournament Series. And on the left, we see Hazobs on Jaina, Nick from uh, the old Method team on Garrosh, Main on Kalthas, Chris on his Pepega account on Leoric, and Banana H on Anna. And over to the right side from Heroes Launch, the amateur series from Division 1, we have Balz on Hanzo, Satuas on Nubura, Gorida on Lunara, Cesar Boss on Chen, and Scope on Anduin. So yeah, definitely a couple of heavy hitters here for Washed Up 2.0. Kind of just the name there a little bit. But let's see how they're gonna play off against their main. <laughs> main and nearly getting wrecked there in the early game. Holy hell! Banana H keeping him alive. But that was a fantastic attack by Hold My V. Uh, damn, that definitely deserved a kill, to be honest with you. On level one, they're actually going into the renew here over the Boulder Flavor from uh, Anduin. But damn, son, that was a nice setup here against him. So now we're having uh, Chris at the top lane going up against Chen here. So Leo against Chen. It's all about the drains there, obviously, for the sustain. But yeah, it's a pretty fun setup. And again, as I said before, this is a tournament. So when you're talking about Division S, the teams are a bit more flexible when they want to play their series. Every team has to play one series, one best of five per week, which means that they are flexible to schedule those matches whenever they want so they can make sure that most of their players are able to play if not all of them whereas this is a tournament match so if you don't have everybody ready on a specific day then you play with sub players and especially since people like JPL and Eternal obviously are moving away from heroes a little bit this is now uh, where Washed Up has for a long time now in the Heroes Hype series gone for a different lineup to play here too. And that's where Nick comes into play. That's where we're seeing Chris, Banana H now for them. So a little bit of a crossover from Division S teams too. But definitely a high caliber as we have Washed Up 2.0 trying to go straight into the grand final here. At the top lane, Chris is starting to get some serious value against Chen. Again, when the panda starts drinking and stays stationary, you can always connect the drain. And that's pretty fantastic and should actually lead to Chris having the top damage right now. Yeah, <laughs> by a lot. 4,700, so that's the beauty of having a constant drain on your top lane plays there. And Chen is currently struggling against the setup a little bit. Level 4 abilities are now ready for both of them. And especially when we're looking towards Chen, he will have a tough time at the top side, at least for now. And has already started to hide a little bit. Now, Mainly with Mana Addict on level 1 is obviously working around his a little bit. He's one of the few players that picks Kalthas reliably in the post-HTC era. And this is actually, as I said in the past, the hero that he really started to make a name with for himself. Back in the days when Blackheart's Bay was still one of the main maps, I can still remember that he played Kalthas on Blackheart's Bay for the first time back then in one of the pro teams as he was picked up. That was actually in the old, 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 old Fnatic setup. And if I'm not mistaken, it was Ace of Spades back then, or Lowell, one of the two, that got him into the team and uh, made him to try out. And Mane came originally from World of Warcraft, and Kel'Thas just felt natural to him, mages in general. And then he started to absolutely murder opponents left and right and became the best mage player in Europe. So for now, he's going back to the roots now with those heroes. And we have a bit of a Song of Ice and Fire here on the side of Washed Up 2.0 as well. They're playing a double mage with Jaina and with Kel'Thas. So a lot of that damage with AoE coming out here. Hazops just dropping the blizzards left and right the entire time. And in the meantime, the Lunara set up with Gore Riders. They're trying to get the AoE through and putting pressure onto Ana in particular. And that can definitely work out. I mean, they have a lot of AoE damage here, but look at this setup against the Nuborak. And Sadra's barely moving out there. Tries to jump away, has a bed of barbs on level 4 to give them a bit more control with the slows. It's a close call for the first objective here, but now Leo and Chen are both starting to rotate in, and level 7 is quicker for Washed Up, which gives them another lead. And that puts Mena straight into the burn flash. They're slightly behind when it comes to the points, but Mane again with the setup, and this time they're going for Hanzo, and that's their first kill in the game. Nicely done here. Great kill against Hanzo. He can stick his bow where the sun doesn't shine. 
And Chen is also getting isolated as the Frozen Punisher is claimed by the blue team. They're trying to make the play for Chen and the Panda is jumping away. Fat Illidan once again and nimble on his feet. But... <laughs> Uh, Chris is actually starting to hunt him down. Lunara talking about being hunted. The deer is dead as well. So Bambi gets kicked on the ground a little bit. Deservedly so. There's definitely going to be a bit of meat on the table here for the blue team as they are already starting to go in from the side. Nick wants to get another throw in. Is in trouble here though. They have to break through the gate and Banana H is helping with exactly that play. Making that right now. Chris at the top lane still playing against Chen here and getting the upper hand in that exchange. And as I said before, Chris in particular can just simply drain all day long. And look at his damage output 10,800. He gets the free drain against Chen the entire game there. And that is absolutely insane. Chen himself obviously also getting some free damage against Liu throughout this entire encounter here, but it just doesn't match up against it. But now that we have additional talents in play, at least Chen has a little bit of a better chance. Especially coming, of course, through in with the Blow Master's balance and the accumulating flame. More of a chance for him now to win that setup. Lunara is starting to move straight back into the middle trying to also get value out of the splintered spear at this point getting all of that aoe out against ana can be quite helpful if they can pull it off properly but for the time being it didn't quite do the trick they have lost two heroes in the previous encounter here and there's a lead now obviously for washed up 2.0 and again these are pretty much all ex hgc players so these guys are definitely on a completely different level here and once that level 10 abilities are in, Hold My Beer will have to be really, really careful because that's normally the moment when you can gain a lot of momentum through synergies in the ults. And especially with Entomb likely to be taken here and the taunt on Garrosh, there's a lot where the double mage can capitalize on it with quick damage. And there we have the abilities already. And let's not forget about the Nano Boost here either. I mean, we're talking about Nano Boost either on Jaina or on Kel'Thas and also the Ring of Boss coming in. The burst potential that we're seeing here is quite insane. Chris is able to move away for now. Top side though, well, two heroes pushing through, which means that the bottom is a bit neglected at this point. We're having again the attempt to go for the heroics now. That's a cocoon arrow. And well, Lunara is going into the leaping strike. Okay, so no poke with the Thornwood Mines. Whereas Anduin goes into uh, his Salvation ult here. There's <laughs> no, no diving bombs in this game. Well, they could actually play it around an Uburak and Chen, to be honest with you. So they could definitely try and play that style. But they're not going to go for it. Instead, we're having a bit of a different setup where they're just trying to keep everybody alive and uh, keep Andrew in a way as much as possible for any interrupts that they could use there against this. So now at the top side, uh, Chen's still riding the shark there. But there's the shrine being announced, and that's where the next party should start. And also, Kel'Thas actually about to get his quest completed, so that's a big one. And he's not the only one. If they get Hazorps close enough, then they will have for both of them not only the Fingers of Frost, but also the Mana Addict completed. So that is just in time for the objective. That's obviously just beautiful from a timing perspective for them right now. And it's still 11 versus 11, so we're talking the same levels and same talents. The move towards the top as the camp is also now taken by the red team. Hold my beer. is starting. All right, boys, let's go for this and see what we can do here. Heroic abilities are in. It's time to shine. Let's get the panda into action. And make sure that we are unleashing the power of him. But there's a quick move straight in. Double and tomb already. Lunara yeah, jumps out. And a good ult from Anduin. Fantastic ult. But there's the Ring of Frost and it connects with three. Yep, there's the ult on the side of Chen. Well, so I thought. But there's the kill as Kel'Thas comes through with the damage. They're trying to make the turn against Nick, But they can't get the kill against Garrosh. And now with four heroes on the map, it's starting to become a little bit more dicey. Again, the setup against the Nubarak. And he jumps out. Gore Rider on Lunara. Has to be a bit careful there at the front line now, too. Can't go too deep against all of this. Yeah, starts to jump in. They go for Mayor, they go for Kalthas, and they should get the kill there. And they are able to drop him. Kalthas is down, and Nubarak attacked. Lunara at the side jumps over again and gets an O here. Ah, but able to actually keep herself alive there and get some additional damage out. Nicely done, actually. And now all of a sudden they have a chance here. Boys, hold my beer. They're sitting there and they get the action going. 
They're starting to take a lead on the points, and Chen is back to business. Chris on Leo is in the middle, and that's a lot of experience that's going to be lost to the blue team, uh, to the red team. Oh boy, and that's going to do a lot of damage now too. Pyromaniac, obviously, on level 13. Oh dear, oh dear, Lunara. Ah, oh, the maze to the face as Bambi gets eliminated. Yep, well, that is keeping the meat fresh and tender. As she gets pummeled into the ground there. That's a big taunt. And they're starting to make the play now against Anubarak. The Ring of Frost and the elimination as Anubarak is dead. The Panda going for the triple and they're trying to go for Banana Age. And that's the kill. Ana is down, but Chen might be in trouble too. And that's not the end of it. 39, can they at least get the punish? Oh, Hanzo. Yes, they get it. But the double kill. Down go Anduin and Hanzo. Well done, and great job there. So, well, they get the kills, but the opponent got the Punisher, so at least something. And now they obviously have to defend against this first, but Chris is already busy in the mid lane again, and is starting to pressure that out. Let's have a bit of a look also at the damage output that we're seeing here so far. Obviously, Chris still holds the top numbers. Again, he has a highly inflated damage through the one-on-one -on -one trades into Chen at the early game. Easy peasy. But outside of that, we're seeing Kalthos and especially Jaina starting to catch up with him. But I would be very surprised if we would see anybody overtake Leoric anytime soon here. Because, yeah, that early game... How much did he get? 10,000 through that trade already? Chen himself sitting on 20k, being in a similar situation. But there is still Lunara to account for with 20,000 damage by own. They get the kills in. I mean, it's too... It, the damage in. They have seven kills against two is what we're seeing here now. Level 13 talents give us the greater spell shield. So I gotta admit that Hold My Beer is actually starting to play this nicely. Ooh, but that could be a problem. There's the Entomb, but Chris gets attacked. I'm trying to get the kill there. They might actually be able to pull that one off. But Gareth's already sitting at the side. There's the big taunt. Phoenix as Mane comes in from the other end. They're making the play again with the Cocoon. And Lunara is already ready to jump in for this. And Hazops is low. The kill against Hanzo. But Jaina is dead too. Nick keeps himself alive for much longer. And Banana Age with one dart after another. Keeping him in play. But for how much longer can they pull that off? Nick is low. And Garrosh <laughs> finally dies. I mean, it was about time there. Problem is that Anduin is in trouble now, and yep, that's the end of him. Anduin down, 9 kills against 4, and level 16 is nearly ready. Yeah, it's a pretty solid setup here. Washed up 2.0 is playing this nicely. But look at Leo. Chris has actually done this a few times in the past already. He goes into an auto attack build for Leo in those games with a Spectral Leech on level 13 and the Mithril Mace on level 16. That's been a style that he's been playing every single time when he was put onto Leoric on the offlane for his team. Offlane is obviously not his normal position to be in, so he's definitely going to make sure that he has some fun on the hero there, which we're seeing right now. Level 13 talents also brings us the touch of honey. Uh, well, we all know that Chen really likes... I mean, he has a little bit of a sweet tooth. Always did. Uh, guess why he is uh, Mr. XXL here. Uh, there's the attempted kill against Nick, the arrow, and the leaping strike, Ring of Frost, and Garrosh just doesn't fucking die. I mean, seriously, that guy just walks around everything and just doesn't fall. Hanzo, on the other hand, he's a bit more on the squishy side. Nice and tomb again. The, oh my god. Chris, calm the fuck down, seriously. What an entomb. Over the wall with a full-on trap. Yep, and now we're having two heroes down, five alive on the other side, and there's at least the panda, and the panda wants some action. Gets actually immediately put to sleep here. Yep, that was a tranquilizer there, the aggressive panda, and already Chris is on the job again, trying to see if he can maybe take Chen down too. But holy hell, what a setup! Yeah, and Chen is on the run, and guys, he's not gonna make it, I'm sorry to tell you. Panda is down. And that's now 12 kills against 4. And Kalthas is already sitting at the bottom of the map here at the same time and trying to make a play there. 16 versus 16 in terms of talents, but hold my beer, they need to have a better approach into the fight if they really, really want to take it. We have Epicenter taken though. Hanzo also dying, alright. But yeah, Epicenter has now been taken too, as the uh, shrine gets attacked again, or the minions do. So, no, Hanzo doesn't have Epicenter. Nuburak has, happy, uh, has Epicenter. Hanzo has just accumulated another death. That makes a little bit more sense. The even-handed blessing. 
But with the 16, they know they can't really take a fight here as long as two heroes are still dead, so they have to give this one up. Lunara went into the unfair advantage. Yeah, and the top lane gets pressured instead. I mean, I like the idea that with the camp that you just took, you try to get some value here by simply pushing as your opponent goes for the bottom of the map and tries to get the objective. The problem is that Washed Up 2.0 has just too much experience to panic and rotate up, so they give up the fort, and instead they're moving down to the bottom of the map to prep already for the push with the Punisher. So they're sacrificing the fort top side, and they're going through the wall down here, just simply saying, do what you want, we are going to get that keep right now, and there's nothing you can do about it. So with the wall opened up, the keep is definitely up for grabs. They're already setting also a little bit of a side lane and set up here, with Nick on the main tank just waiting for rotation to happen. Now, Chris isn't here. Chris is still missing. Chris is at the top lane on Leo, so that's another big deal here now too. We're having again the jump straight in, but they will defend this. Yeah, there's a five man against four, so they're actually going to defend this. It, it's still all opened up, so that helps. But the Punisher is also radically moving around a little bit. Like, yeah, that guy apparently suffering from dementia, if you ask me. It's like, walks left, walks right, never really attacks anything. Finally, is starting to get some hits in onto the keep. But that's not enough. Jumps and loses out on that again. Leo proxying the wave here so that the minions get more damage in against the fort at the top. And talking forts, I mean, the one in the middle is also taken down. So they are able to get really good damage against the outer structures. And with level 20 now about to be grasped by Washed Up, they have a great lead here as well. Storm Talents early on for them. Damage output, I mean, look at Chris, 35,000. Jaina starting to close the gap a little bit with 28k on her part now. Lunara has even more, but the problem still remains that Hold My Beer has big problems to secure kills. They get the damage through, but they don't have a lot of kills in the game just yet. So, yep, with this, we're having bot lane also. Chen sitting tight. Needs to be a bit careful. Flamethrower, by the way. Four mana now. Also, the Mithril Maze has been completed. And the Buried Alive. And already, Chris is looking for it. He's looking for the Buried Alive. And yeah, it doesn't get it quite yet. But if there is just a single Sleep Dart, for example, to set up the Buried Alive, it's going to be a kill. And now, obviously, they're looking for the keep. I mean, duh. They have a camp pushing in, they have level 20, they have buried alive to force a fight and force a kill, and the opponent can't pretty much do anything here. Yep, there's the stun, and where's the buried alive? Doesn't even use it yet. Arrow came out, but already got eaten by Leo. Yep, they're going for the panda, and you might ask, what panda? And you have a point, because, well, that is another quick one against him. Also, the nano boost on Nick. Arrow's just going ham here as Anubarak dies, and they're trying to go for Lunara again. Gorider is in trouble, leap strikes out, and keeps himself in play for a little bit longer. But Anduin gets thrown back in and might have to use that sword after all. Turns out he doesn't know how to use it. We all knew it. I mean, that little bad boy is just throwing light around the entire time. Oh no, please don't. Mena then again wants to get the kill against Hanzo and is able to secure that too. And with that, we might even see the game end since only Lunara is still in play. And they are already moving straight in for the core. Lunara right now on 48,000, 49,000 damage. Only two deaths. Great play, actually, generally speaking, from Gore Rider here. But just simply not enough to make a dent into this. Look at Hanzo. He alone died six times in this game. And he was focused hard. And that's going to be the lead in this series for Washed Up 2.0 as they are trying to take the semifinal and move on to the grand final of the Heroes High Premier Series. GG and well played as the blue team takes the victory on Infernal Shrines. Map number two, everyone. Washed up 2.0. They have the lead in the best of three here at the semifinal, and they're starting over to the left with Hazorbs on Rexa. We're currently seeing Pepega, aka Chris, on Hanzo, Banana H on Turanda, Nick on Anubarak, and Mena on Li Ming. Reset City, baby. And that's especially uh, tricky since we have the Vikings on the other side, played by Sartuas. Scissor Boss on ETC, Scope on Malfurion, Balsa on Reyna, and Gore Rider on Sylvanas in this game. All right. 
There's definitely reset value for Liming. Now, there's a little bit of a misconception on the other hand. If you're playing Liming against the Vikings, if you have a really good Vikings player against you, that is definitely something that can backfire quickly. There's still that perception that a lot of people have that whenever they see the Vikings, they're saying like, Oh my god, Liming is winning this single-handedly resets! And it's definitely true if you have a player that is inexperienced with it. But as you've maybe already heard from other players in the past, like for example Hazorps who played a lot of Vikings, if you have a good Vikings player that is able to split his uh, Vikings properly, he shouldn't really suffer from that too much in the early game. And once that you have level 16 and the large and in charge, you actually can hunt Li Ming down pretty effectively. So uh, the perception that a lot of people have that a Li Ming pick against the Vikings is pretty much an automated win is definitely wrong. She can be fantastic if the Vikings player is not able to use the tools that he has to keep the heroes alive. For example, the jump that you get later on. But a good Vikings player can definitely ruin your day a little bit. Obviously, Vikings not really a staple in the meta by any means. But we've seen a lot of games in the past where the Vikings have played a crucial role. And obviously, right now, hold my beer sitting there and saying like, guys, we're the underdogs here. And that's manifests itself into an early kill. Nope, not quite. But it usually is something where a team like Hold, Your, uh, Hold My Beer will, for example, sit there and just say, listen, we're not able to really take them down in a normal setup. Let's try and play this a little bit more sneaky. Play Sylvanas' composition with the Vikings, soak the experience on the lanes, and make sure that we're pushing with a strong foreman with Sylvanas and try and get the value in. So that's the game plan here. Trying to cheese wash up a little bit. It's a big map. It's a map where you can make that value. And I honestly really like the idea of Hold My Beer here. I like that they try something like this since they just experienced on the last map how difficult it is to go up against a team of former HTC pros and take them down here. So they are definitely trying something different. And they're getting the kill against Taranda. They're actually doing pretty well with this. So far, they've taken the first kill. They are slightly in an experience. Mena, as you can see, is doing a whole lot of work at the bottom, has moved through the wall. We're seeing push in the middle where Hazorps is trying now with Rexa to do the same thing. But thanks to the Sylvanas power, they are the ones to get the first fort here. So it's definitely a cool thought process behind it, and I definitely appreciate that from a team like Hold My Beer that is nowhere near the experience level of the opponent they go up against. For them, it would already be huge to win a map here. So we'll see how this is going to work out for them now. But yeah, down to the bottom of the map. That's where we are still seeing experience being held. On level 4, we now have the speed medal, so a bit of... Uh, the speed increase, Eric the Swift has been claimed. We're seeing also still Gore Rider trying to get the value through here with the rest of the team on the camps and maybe try and push with that as well. Might of the Benji Queen on level 1. And now that the prisoner camp is getting uh, uh, spawned on the map for the first time, well, spawns up, they can try and make a play around that. Mena still trying to get the kill down here. Once that he has Calamity, it's going to be much easier for him. He's slightly behind in experience. But I gotta admit that Sartorius is actually doing quite well on the Vikings. Not losing a single one yet. I guess it's going to happen sooner rather than later. But still, up to this point, he played really, pretty well around this. And honestly, playing in a tournament like this is absolutely fantastic for a team like Hold My Beer. If you're an amateur team, you should always try and sign up for tournaments like here, the Heroes Hype Series, to get that experience. Yeah, Malfurion goes down pretty quickly there as we have a nice engage from Washed Up. And we're seeing also finally a Viking fall as Hanzo takes down another. But it's honestly one of the interesting things because if you see Division S teams go up against each other and you just read, oh, another kill comes in against Reyner. And you read up on some of the comments that are being posted then either on Twitch, YouTube or anywhere else. There's always people like, oh my god, these guys are so bad. Oh my god, this looks like my Platinum Storm League games. And you don't really understand how good some of these teams and players are unless you actually face off against them in an actual tournament setup. So I would recommend to everybody who looks at these games and thinks that they are on the same level to at some point get a team together, sign up for a tournament and just try their luck there and see how far they'll go because you get a reality check pretty quickly in these setups. And at this point, the check is actually on Malfury, and as ne he nearly gets taken down, the objective is about to be won. And Eric, is he going to fall? Ah, he's a little bit too swift. But the objective is taken, and now we have two kills against one. We're currently looking at, well, level 7 for both teams. Calamity in particular will make it difficult for the Vikings to stay alive against Li Ming right now, as Main is obviously going to be looking for those kills to secure those quickly. We have on uh, the same side now... Uh, for Baylock, the Fierce Taken, so a bit more damage output from him and can definitely start to pressure the lanes a little bit more. 
Viking still slightly in trouble at the bot lane. Uh, Eric goes down already up at the top, down to the bottom of the map. Li Ming is pushing this out, and this is really the moment where you are in trouble. If you with a four man are not able to get the objective, then on this map you might run into a problem rather sooner than later. Because now we're having Li Ming pushing this out. There's all of a sudden Raiders sitting straight in the middle. And yep, or cavalry in the middle at the bot lane. At the top, there's still that little fight happening. Spouse is trying to keep Hazorps at bay, which isn't easy by any means either. But this is a lot of pressure right now from Washed Up 2.0, and they are sitting now nearly at level 10. I mean, they're getting close to it, and the first fort is down. There's the engage again, and EGC is, needs to be careful. And he has a bit of assistance at least, with Malfurion and Reyna both being ready for him. The bottom of the map, uh, there's still Olaf sitting. 10 is so close right now. And obviously, with the entire setup as it stands, we also had a bit of an adjustment since Chris can now play Hanzo. He, most of the time, he was actually forced into the offlane. But now that Rexa has been chosen against the Vikings as a weapon for washed up, Hazob switches over to the hero since he's been playing a lot more on that. And he's still pushing through the top of the map. Went into Hunter Gatherer on level 4 as well, which means that he's soon going to get the extra armor for himself and for Misha. The level 10 abilities are in for both of the teams right now. And with that, we're now having an opportunity for them to maybe even force a fight. But of course, with the Vikings and the Soak that we're seeing here, level 10 is ready for Hold My Beer too. And we're having, again, pretty normal standard times to be taken. Play again, Wailing, Arrow, and for ETC. I honestly would still expect the Moshpit to be taken. We don't have a global on the other side. You can play around the stage dive here if you want. Mena the only one surviving at the bot lane for now. There's an arrow coming through. Mena wants to go in for the kill. They're trying to go for Jimmy. And that's a calamity. And that's a kill. And they're making the second play for Go Rider. He's down too. That's two eliminated. ETC tries to get out here and stage dives away. But Malfurion won't be able to escape this. He gets the Twilight Dream through, but that doesn't matter anymore. The kill against Malf, and that's three kills with this little setup towards the bot lane. And it allows them to push for the fort as well. The lead in this series, four washed up, and they are starting to get pretty severely ahead in the second game too. They want to make this obviously a quick victory here. And they're going for the boss at the bottom of the map right now. And that is going to push through that lane quite easily and might actually be able to... Uh, I don't really think they can drop the keep with it, but they can definitely start to knock at the door slightly. And there's obviously now another objective uh, spawning too. So um, there's a chance that they're just going to let this run through and instead go for the objective. There's also Vikings still on the map that you can start to hunt down a little bit. Mena has started to poke the minions down at the bottom of the map, but there's the defense now, as obviously Hold My Beer doesn't want to risk losing their fort here, or their, their keep, but that also opens up the uh, prisoner camp, and they are going for it immediately. Damage output, as you can see, pretty much stacked in favor of Washed Up, with 27,000 on Hanzo. Chris excelling at that for now, getting the poke damage through. But the Vikings are pushing the top lane, so there's at least some value to be had for Hold My Beer as they're trying to control the map a little bit through that. They keep Baylock on the line, and that's highly important. I highlighted a little a 7 talent already earlier, so Baylock is great there. <laughs> Reyna, on the other hand, just pulled the Houdini and disappeared within a second. One moment he was there, the next one he wasn't anymore. And now we have the second kill against Malfurion, and an ETC is also dying. The coordination with Sylvanas getting dropped too is just too much for Hold My Beer to handle. Washed Up is taking everybody down as the Vikings at least push towards the top keep. But they won't be able to get too much here. Hazops is already riding in and trying to get the value there. Now the, <laughs> yeah, the objective has been taken too by the team in blue. And they're looking good. Nine kills against one. They're looking powerful here. They have the extra talent with level 13 which gives us now the Dire Beast for Misha. We're having also Mena going full glass cannon here, saying like, let's YOLO this. He wants the damage, he's gonna get the damage, he get the kill against Olaf. And we're gonna get the jump obviously soon. Uh, Baylock down too, as Rexa takes him down topside. But the main push is coming through the middle now, as we're having the cavalry coming in. Ooh, Nick actually diving a little bit too deep there. Uh, another kill against the Vikings, as Li Ming is getting the resets down at the bottom of the map. But starts the rotation into the middle. The arrow comes in, and Calamity Baby as they're trying to go for the kill, but Mene can't quite secure it. So now they're going for ETC. Do they have the stun? Yeah, they do. 
but it's not enough, and Mena has to actually move out and can't go in with the Calamity damage. Bot lane, Cavalry does work. Over here, they're looking for the resets. Misha is still sitting topside with Rexa. And they got the wall, but they are not getting the keep itself. That fort, on the other hand, is definitely going to fall. And now the five-man effort here in the middle. In comes the aggression. They get the kill against Malf. They get the kill against Draenor. They're looking for the kill against Sylvanas. And ETC is also getting attacked. Both of them are a bit low. Sardras is trying to push in. 16 talents are ready for them as well. And there's just aggression all over the place as Washed Up is dealing with the Vikings and using the objective. Just push this aggressively at the top, at the bottom, in the middle. They are everywhere right now. Washed Up with kill kill after kill after kill as they're looking for the 2-0 victory 12 kills against one the vikings at this point trying to go for the bribery on the left side as soon as the cavalry is eliminated and that's going to be soon since the top is nearly taken down but yep that's going to at least give a camp over to them so satra is already there takes the camp Gets at least some value for that and stops some of the push that is going to come through here. But with another boss now about to be attacked, there's a good setup for Washed Up to maybe even make the play for the top. They're a little bit more cautious since Li Ming isn't there. So Li Ming is currently just helping with the defense. And there's no Turand on the map, on the side of the uh, red team that is, that could get an owl set up over there. So they're still trying to bait this a little bit, not really making the commitment yet. But everybody else is starting to rotate over. Li Ming is starting to get a lot closer. So they're willing to make it. Oh, ETC actually felt pressure to go even in the stage dive setup. That doesn't turn out too good for him. Gets taken down by the boss who all of a sudden starts to take sides here. Olaf dead, Malfurion isolated, gets the Twilight three Dream through, but he's not going to survive that either. And obviously, Reyna is completely out of position here now as well. There's just nobody to peel for them anymore. With them going for the Viking composition, they just don't have another frontliner. And it's just an absolute slaughter with 17 kills against one at this point. The Vikings with some additional pressure on the map and Mena just moving over and try and take them down here. At the bottom of the map, we're at least seeing Belo get some value, but he might actually fall there too. Gets out, uh, slowly and steadily. A little bit of value lost in the middle. In experience, they're two levels behind right now, and with the boss, we should see a push through the top for keep from the perspective of Washed Up now. Mena making the decision if he wants to join up with the rest of the team, but first of all trying to go for the kill here and gets it. Uses the ult for it too, but obviously earns the reset shortly after. 47,000 damage from Chris, 34k for Li Ming. And now the push through the top. And as you can tell, Li Ming is starting to rotate in. They want to keep and they want more. They want to look if they can end the game here. 16 talents are there for both sides. Arrow is missing. Not a great start for Washed Up into the fight. But they're three levels ahead right now. And there's the Cocoon. They're trying to make the play against Gore Rider. And Sylvanas is in trouble, but it doesn't fall. And the stuns aren't there yet. There's the slow center kill against Malfurion. The reset for Li Ming. Mane again looking for another one. The keep obviously down, and that's already two of the armor shields taken away from the bosses. They're diving in for Jimmy. The stuns connect, and so does the damage. Down he goes. ETC is dead too. And that's going to be the end of the game and the series as Washed Up is making moves to go straight into the grand final. They are going straight for the play here and with 20 kills against one, no problem for them. Storm Talents now ready for them too with a bullseye on Hanzo. Not that it was needed here, but they take the victory. GG and well played as Washed Up takes down Hold My Beer with a 2-0 victory at the Heroes Hype Premier Series.